welcome to story time. I'm Miss Kit and I'm here in the Helen Gale story room as always at the St. Charles Library. And I think we should get started by singing our hello song. What do you think? You'll say hello and I'll say hello and we'll say hello together. You'll say Well, tonight is a special night because we're going to be reading some stories about silly bedtime. Do you like bedtime sillies? I do. I do. The first book is a very silly book and very fun, and it's called Friday Night Wrestlefest. And it was written by J.F. Fox, and the pictures are by Micah Player. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Friday night. There's the pizza delivery person. That's right, school is out. You can tell by the backpacks. Dinner was pizza delicious. And best of all, it's time for Friday Night Wrestlefest! And the main event is Battle to the Bedtime. Mm. In this corner, it's Dangerous Dadu. He's mad. He's bad. He's dad. Over on the kid crew, we have the Tag Team Twins featuring the nutty by nature peanut brother and the wriggly giggly jellyfish with special guest star big bald baby let's get ready to wrestle Kicking things off tonight is Jellyfish. She lands a jumpin' jelly flop on her poor old pop. Now Peanut Brothers piling it on with a blasting butter bump. Yes siree, Dangerous Dadu is smack dab in a wham bam jam slam witch. Peanut, Peanut Brother, and Jelly. The tides and tentacles quickly turn. Who will win? Dangerous Dadu snatches jellyfish in a squishy squid squeeze. Tentacles, did you say? Peanut Brother spins in to help his sis with a swirling shark clone. Look at those teeth. Totally jawsome. Dangerous Dadu fights back, dishing out some seriously slobbery codfish kisses. Did somebody order the fish and lips? <laughs> but hold the tartar sauce. What's going on? Who's coming? From out of nowhere, it's a flying mom bomb. That's right, folks. The one, the only, Mama Rama has entered the ring. She's home from work and going berserk. <laughs> Are two grown-ups too many for the tag team twins? Does this mean Betty bye-bye for the kid crew? Dangerous Dadu looks like he's got this one in the bag. But hold the banana phone. Could it be? Mama Rama is joining forces with the kid crew. Dangerous Dadu has been double crossed. It's a perfect parent trap. Bedtime looks bleak. Dadu is da done. Ladies and gentlemen, nothing can save him now. 
nothing except big bald baby and a clear the room diaper of doom. That'll put an end to Russellfest. After a quick bedtime blitz, jammy jam, brush and flush, book and tuck. This Russellfest has officially become a Nestlefest. It's Friday night, lights out for the kid crew. Good night from the arena. Until next week's Friday Night WrestleFest. Do you think you could do that at your house? You better ask a grown-up. How about another silly story about bedtime? This one is called, What? Cried Granny. And it's called an almost bedtime story. It was written by Kate Lum and the pictures are by Adrian Johnson. So many pages. Once upon a time, there was a boy named Patrick who was having his first sleepover at his granny's house. As the sun began to set, granny said, Patrick, dear boy, it will be dark soon. Time to get ready for bed. But granny, said Patrick, I don't have a bed here. What? cried granny. She ran out to her yard where some tall trees were growing and chopped one down. She carried it to her workroom, opened her toolbox, and made Patrick a fine bed. Look at all the things she does. She saws wood, she drills, she measures, she nails nails. Then she painted it a restful shade of blue put a comfy red mattress on it, and took it to the bedroom. There you are, dear boy, said Granny. Now climb into bed, lay your head on the pillow, and sail off to dreamland. But Granny, said Patrick, I don't have a pillow here. What? cried Granny. She ran out to her hen house, woke up the chickens, and collected a big batch of feathers. She took them to her sewing room where she made a bag out of cloth. Then she stuffed it with the feathers, sewed it up neatly, and gave it to Patrick. There you are, dear boy, said Granny. Now climb into bed, lay your head on the pillow, tuck the blanket under your chin, and I'll kiss you good night. But Granny, said Patrick, I don't have a blanket here. What? cried Granny. She ran outside and headed for the hills where a flock of fat sheep were snoozing. She sheared off some of their wool and ran right back home. She took the wool to her basement, spun it into yarn, knitted a fuzzy warm blanket, and dyed it the prettiest shade of twilight purple. When it was dry, she carried it upstairs and spread it on the bed. Now, dear boy, said Granny, Climb into bed, lay your head on the pillow, tuck the blanket under your chin, give your teddy bear a hug, and turn out the light. But Granny, said Patrick, I don't have a teddy bear here. What? cried Granny. She grabbed her emergency sewing kit, tore down the living room curtains, cut, sewed, stuffed, added, button, eyes, and a red ribbon, there it is, and made a teddy bear for Patrick. Granny can do anything. Now, Patrick, cried Granny, climb into bed, lay your head on the pillow, tuck 
tuck the blanket under your chin, give your teddy bear a hug, and go to sleep. But Granny, said Patrick, it's morning. What? cried Granny. The end. So much to do, the night flew. Well, my friends, we've come to the end of another story time. And you know what that means? It's time to sing our goodbye song, which is Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. You remember? It goes like this. Twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder what you are. Up above the world so high, like a diamond in the sky. Twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder what you are. Well, I had fun with you reading some bedtime silly books. I'll see you next time. Bye.